Hello and welcome everybody. Just double checking I'm live. <laughs> All right. Yay, we're live. Hello lunar ladies. Welcome to Friday. What I like to say, happy Friday or Freya day, right? Um, it's time for us to kick off our shoes. Remember this new moon in Libra cycle that we're in currently uh, is about taking a siesta. So it's about deep rest. And I posted earlier this week about how, uh, you know, with all these planets moving out of retrograde into direct motion, it was basically like, get your beauty rest. That was the message I got um, that was delivered to me so sweetly from my own doggy, <laughs> Lyra White Tara. She was, uh, she sleeps in my room, though not on my bed, which to my dismay, but she sleeps on her own bed on the floor, right? She won't get on the bed, but I'm like, come on, come on, come on. She's like, no, no. <laughs> Completely the opposite of probably most other dog parents, right? But anywho, so when she wakes up in the morning, she's very cute. She's so adorable. <laughs> And she likes to sleep in. She's not the kind of doggy that gets you up early. She's the one that's hanging out at the bed, enjoying um, the peace and quiet. So anyway, she was, uh, you know, she looks so beautiful, you know, when she's sleeping <laughs> and when she's awake. But anyway, I was just marveling and enjoying her beauty. And I'm like, baby girl, it's time to get up, right? And she gave me like one eye open and she's like, it's really important that one gets their beauty rest. <laughs> I was like, oh, 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 wait a sec. I think you're onto something. <laughs> so anyway, we had this whole telepathic conversation. Uh, beauty rest, and what does that mean, right? So what does beauty rest mean to you, all you lovely lunar ladies? <laughs> Hi, Heather. Hi, Carly. So nice to see you. Happy Freya Day to the goddesses who are here and um, ready to go for this weekend, right? We've got our plant, green goddess witch ladies. We've got the crystal skull, dragon goddess witch ladies. It's like, yes, right on, sisters. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so beauty rest. I don't want you to underestimate the power of beauty rest. Um, and it really is listen to your body. And if your body says, you know what, I'm tired, it's okay. If you can, amongst your family and work and all the things that you're handling and managing, to give yourself the space to say it's okay to be tired, it's okay to lay down, it's okay to take a cat nap, it's okay to sleep in, it's okay to go to bed early, right? Because you just tell everybody you're getting your beauty rest and nobody questions that. They're like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> So I invite you to continue to do that throughout the rest of um, October, or maybe even this lunar cycle, which goes through November 4th. Okay, so what I wanted to go live to, uh, about, other than to say hello, is I wanted to tell you about the latest astro news, so you're aware and current with the cosmic flow of the way uh, things are happening uh, on our planet and our solar system and probably more close to home in your own life. <laughs> and of course you grab your natal chart and see where this is taking place in your own natal chart. Right? And if you need help to do that, you can always join me in the lab, which is the astrology lab, <laughs> where we're alchemizing and understanding how to use our charts, put them into action, to understand what's happening in our lives, and take charge, take control of it, right? Make it what you want. Okay, so what's happening, right? Any, feel free to comment with any questions you might have, like what the heck does this mean? But today marks the day of the halfway point. We are halfway uh, through the zodiac year of 2021. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome, lovely. She just became a, a grandmama of two lovely puppies. Luna and Belle. Is that right? I just saw your comment. That was so cool. They're so cute. And your baby Gigi, mama. For, is that her first time being a mama? Uh, congratulations. 
two lovely uh, puppies that were born into the world. Um, so we'd like to celebrate that. Okay, so the zodiac year of 2021 is now halfway complete. Hooray! <laughs> so if we look at that in regards to a lunar cycle, we would say we're at the full moon point, right? And the new moon in Libra also marks the full moon point of, of the year, meaning we're halfway through, we're at the zenith point, and we want to expand and celebrate and kind of take a look around. Take a look around your life this weekend and go, okay, I've come halfway around this journey that we call the Zodiac year of 2021. What has happened and what would I like to happen? And at the, the full moon or the halfway mark, this is when we say, what do I need to release, right? What needs to be released in your life? So start thinking about that, asking, you know, do an oracle card spread, ask your pendulum, do a meditation, look at your chart, all kinds of wonderful things. Get a reading, right? Get a little astro checkup. I have, uh, for returning clients, if you've had a reading with me already, I have a soul refresher session, and um, I'll put the link to that if you are uh, wanting to get a, a hello to your natal chart. Um, and this is for returning clients, so uh, I don't offer this reading uh, for people who I haven't read their charts yet, because then i got to get your chart, i got to make your chart, i got to take a look at it. Um, so that's extra time. So I discount the session, and it's really just you and I on Zoom, looking at your chart, asking questions, getting a healing, and, uh, and a plan moving forward. So if you want a soul refresh session, uh, let me know. You can send me a, a DM or an email, or you can comment in the slide, and <laughs> I'll send you the link. And that's a, a, a discounted session for an hour and a half. It's at $188. And I have Zip available on my website, which lets you pay in four payments. Isn't that nice? So it makes it affordable and easy and um, so that you can say yes to it as well as then receive all the goodness that it can bring into your life. Okay, so we're halfway through and it's the full moon point. So you want, I want you to start asking, what can I release? And then and once you discover what that is, then I want you to celebrate Right, because full moons come within a bookend. Release and celebrate because we make we release and make space, and then we want to fill it in with what we enjoy and love and honor and cherish and value. That's what you want to put back into that space, and then you know that's cause for celebration, as cause for some party or some delicious food making in the kitchen or some type of dancing or celebration going on. So plan for some celebration over this weekend because we're at the halfway mark so think about what am i releasing that i need to that i've come through that i'm ready to let go of or that you know it's an old pattern that i'm ready to just free myself from free that energy you could do a burning ritual this today or this and this weekend you can um you know write it on down on a piece of paper and burn it safely with sacred fire and what is sacred fire you light a candle with intention, with a prayer, and use that candle to, to burn the paper instead of like a match or something. Because the candle with the intention and the prayer becomes sacred fire, and then you use sacred fire to release uh, what you're ready to let go of. So that's a nice uh, uh, ritual that you can do for this halfway mark. And then don't forget to fill in the space once you feel like, wow, okay, I let a big chunk go. Then you can write down what you love, what, you're, what you value, what brings a smile to your face, and then you put that into your, to the place that is now um, ready for uh, more of you, more of your spirit, your soul. All right, so today, uh, the, uh, let's see, the sun is at, I believe, is it 20 degrees Libra? American Ephemeris. And the glasses. Where might those glasses be? Oh, no glass. Oh, here they are. <laughs> Any guesses what the degree of the sun is today? Oh, I could look at the chart of the moment. Uh, let's see. What's today? October 15th, right? Oh, I was so close. The sun is at 21 degrees Libra. Yay! 
So we're officially in what they call the third decan of Libra. And when you take my um, intro to understanding your astrology chart, your natal chart, um, you will learn that. <laughs> That's also available for you. Uh, and I can leave you links for that too. <clears throat> and I'm making that course available in uh, the site that has the tuning forks for star seeds um, because I can make it available on payments as well. I'm, I'm in the process of moving that, that information over to one place. All right, so 21 degrees Libra. So that takes, that's called the third decan of Libra. And that takes on the flavor of Gemini, right? And what's interesting, I don't think I can share my screen with this live, but um, I looked at the chart at the moment and there's a finger of God, which is created by 250 degree angles pointing to Mercury today. And Mercury has now stationed um, at, the, at the degree that it is going direct on October uh 18th. Okay, so that's 10 degrees Libra. So today um, also includes the vibration of the Mercury retrograde. And I've been talking with clients this week, and they're like, oh my God, this Mercury retrograde has been brutal. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah, well, it is pretty powerful, Mercury retrograde. <laughs> and we're in the air element of Mercury uh, going through all the air signs, and he's um, in Gemini. He's a, in the mutable air energy, and in Earth, he's mutable Earth energy. But anyway, that's Virgo. So he's. It's a really unstable vibration. Air needs to be grounded. And today, with that finger of God pointing to Mercury retrograde at ten degrees Libra, is um, needs grounding. So that's why it worked out perfectly to do a live today. <laughs> <laughs> because that gets me into the healing of timelines and how do we approach healing our timelines. And I was uh, listening to a link that uh, Raya posted about uh, this hypnotist who was being interviewed and around uh, a book that she wrote coming from her client sessions where people were remembering their Atlantean lifetimes. And I was like, wow, this is so interesting because I've, read another story of another channel guy who, his work is so amazing, I can't even think of his name right now, but his book was awesome. And he was uh, also getting memories of Atlantis, of a certain uh, thing that was happening. And I was just struck by it because I was like, oh, that feels so familiar, and maybe I was there, or had a similar experience, or why do I know this vibration, right? And it hit home, and I know some uh, friends and clients who I, I believe were part of that uh, energy. Uh, so I think, thank Raya for posting that today. I, I listened to that interview. It was very good. Um, but uh, basically, uh, you know, there's there's timelines that we've lived in uh, throughout different ages on the planet. So like the age of Taurus, the age of Cancer, the age of Leo. And a lot of times we equate, we're in the age of Pisces right now. So the age of Leo, we equate with that Atlantis and Egyptian timelines. The age of Cancer is more like this Lemurian uh, timeline or Tara. Uh, the age of uh, Pisces is what we're in now, right? That's more the, the Christianity uh, and the prophet ages like Muhammad, Abraham, Jesus, right? Those are the prophets of the age of Pisces. And uh, so we're moving into the age of Aquarius. But anytime that the ages turn, there's always a flooding back of the age before to help the transition into the next age and help dissolve and heal the, the current timeline or age that we're in. So I was just struck by that as well. Like, oh, this is so interesting, the timing of today being the halfway mark of the zodiac year of 2021. And we're in um, the you know, the sun's moving into the third decan of Libra, which brings in the Gemini energy, and we're in a, you know, a Mercury retrograde that just stationed at the degree he's going to go direct in a couple days. And right before he goes direct, we have Jupiter at 22 degrees Aquarius, ready to go direct on the 17th. And that's the Aquarius, right? Aquarius age. 
right? It's showing us, it's an expansion of, of a glimpse of the future that's in our midst. That a lot of us have come into incarnating now in, in, in our lives, taking on a new life, a new body, a new personality, uh, to set into motion uh, the age of Aquarius, right? We're, we're frequency modulators, as well as maybe we're healing timelines from the last Atlantean age. And um, from the woman, the hypnotherapist, what she discovered was there's so many uh, mirror reflections of the fall of Atlantis happening now that happened then. And, and you know, there's some people surmising like, oh wow, are, are the same souls who were there during the fall of Atlantis, are they here now? Like healing the timelines. So um, I wanted to talk about healing timelines in this live today with y'all. And, and also let you know that there's another astrological layer that you can tap into. And it happens every time this year from 15 degrees Libra to 15 degrees Scorpio. And it's called uh, the Via Combusta or the Path of Fire. And this is a time when the cosmos is really geared up for uh, burning free of old debris, karma, past lives, suffering. It's an opportunity for 30 days to heal with the power of the movement of the sun through the cosmos. Right? It's called the Via Combusta. And that will take us through November 8th into the next new moon, which is a new moon in Scorpio. Lunar Samhain. Lunar Samhain's coming up with the new moon in Scorpio. And um, I'm going to do a really cool thing um, that I might invite you to join me if you want. You don't have to. <laughs> but it's this cool thing I've been waiting for, like, since the beginning of this year to do. Because I want to do it in, in harmony and right time with the cosmos. But it's um, uh, traveling along a, uh, the Avalonian lunar cycle, which starts with the full moon in Taurus is when we start the descent on the silver wheel. So, you know, if you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, Shannon, but that sounds kind of cool, let me know. Because um, I was just going to do it on my own, but I have so many of the supplies that I have enough to share. <laughs> so somebody's like, oh, I want to, I don't know what that is, but I want to learn more. I want to do that. Um, it's a shamanic journey through the Avalonian, Avalon, priestesses and how they do shamanic soul retrieval work through herbs and meditation. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait. You make the elixirs, the herbal elixirs on every full moon, right? And it's especially potent under a lunar eclipse full moon, which is where the full moon in Taurus will be. It'll be eclipsed. So I'm just so excited. I cannot wait. So I have extra herbs <laughs> and uh, I can share my knowledge with those who might be interested. Okay, so let's talk about um, the Via Combusta, which is a path of burning free of old debris, energy, karma, uh, past lives. So in my Tuning Forks for Star Seeds course, there is this added adventure when you get your your uh, your tuning forks, and then I teach you how to use them, especially uh, if you are a star seed soul, <laughs> which I think most of us are. Um, I I share with you, I give you uh, five healing timelines, and you practice them in each module, and they're designed to heal the timeline. So I think during this via combusta would be such a powerful time to do these healing timelines. So I want to tell you about what they are and uh, share with you that the course is discounted now through the end of October. So if you want to get the discount, uh, and I have a, a two payment plan, so you don't you have that as a, a way to afford the, the course. And I have seven sets of tuning forks ready to mail out. <laughs> <laughs> so for seven lucky ones of you, you buy the course and you say, Shannon, send me the forks. I could go down to the post office today or, or Monday <laughs> and mail them to you. So you're ready to go to do your healing timeline doing, during the Via Combusta when the cosmos is helping you burn free 
Okay, so the timelines. These timelines are based on dimensions. And in the course, I teach you about dimensions. And what are dimensions? They're realms or their frequencies of a certain level of existence. So currently, we say we're in the third dimension. And the third dimension is um, the intersection. You have the first dimension, in, and we see that in the core of Mother Earth. So when you're grounding, you're grounding into the first dimension or the core of Mother Earth so that you can be here now, right? And you can find yourself um, through the second dimension, which is the elements, earth, water, air, fire. And the third dimension is the intersection of creating with that, bringing in the higher dimensions to merge with the lower dimensions. And the third dimension is time and space. How do we create in time and space? We have to be grounded to the first. We have to be engaging with the second, which are the elements. And then we bring in the higher dimensions that our soul is, into the third and we create and co-create together with higher consciousness and the physical world which is first second and then the third of, of uh, time space reality all right so our third dimension currently has been a little you know imbalanced or dissonant and that's coming from this fourth dimensional kind of astral field that's kind of been tinkered with so that we can't fully have a, a full connection, you know, throughout the dimensions. And so in the course, the Tuning Forts for Starseed course, I teach you about the, how do you heal the third, fourth dimensional space that you find yourself in because we're in physical form, bodies, as spirits having a human experience. So we heal first the third and fourth frequency. And in the course, I, there's a whole module dedicated to how to do that. And I give you these wonderful methods uh, with your tuning forks on how to start putting them on your body, bringing them into your awareness, and start healing that third, fourth dimensional split. That's the first healing timeline that you get to heal. Now imagine how many lifetimes you've had in this imbalanced dissonant third fourth dimension and had a lot of suffering pain karma right not understanding what's happening and creating you know cause and effect of the negative nature right so we want to clear that up especially now through the via combusta which is in play now through november 8th okay so uh in the in the course there's the healing of the third fourth dimensional uh, imbalance so then you move through that and you get it in your body and you start shifting and changing your personal vibration your personal frequency and within your own microcosm you heal that third fourth dimensional split right so you've done that great you move on to the next module and then the next module is looking at the fifth dimensional timeline and what's the fifth dimension Right? Fifth dimension is the unified field, right? The web of life, unconditional love. So then I help you with methods with using your tuning forks to start reorganizing your field to be connected to that unified field of, of unity, consciousness, and love. Okay, then we move on to the next dimensional healing, which is the sixth dimension. Now in the fifth dimension, there's a star race who uh, you you get to connect with, and uh, they help you. In the sixth dimension, there's a star race you connect with, and they help you as well. And so that's also saying hello to, the, to that kind of feeling like, oh, I feel like I'm from that, um, that part of the cosmos, or I feel very connected to that. So when we get to the, fifth, the sixth dimensional healing, that's about uh, original blueprints, right? And so we teach, I teach you about that and start tuning into that. So the energy of original blueprints. And that's working with the DNA uh, and the uh, original design of these physical forms. The human body, plants and animals, right? So then you start kind of seeing around like the original design. And then you're going to look at your chart, your soul's purpose, start to move into that six-dimensional understanding. 
And then finally in the course, I take you to the seventh dimension. And you might wonder, why did I end there? Well, it doesn't end there. <laughs> seventh dimension is actually where sound healing is emanating from. So it exists more in that seventh dimension of sound, which it opens the barrier to, or, you know, the frequency adjusting to light. And so they're working together. And just know that the higher the dimensions really are kind of a faster frequency. And so if we have energy coming through the seventh, it's faster and it slows down to six and we get this original blueprint energy. And then the light moves down to the fifth and we get this unconditional love energy. And then it moves down to the fourth and this more astral plane of, of more tele telepathy and communication. And then we get into the third dimension, which is slower and more dense. And that's creating form, right? Like those containers. Second dimension is elements. First dimension is that kind of living library of the iron core crystal that we call Earth. Isn't that cool? So that's available in the course. So what timeline do you feel you're kind of stuck at, right? And some of us might feel very disconnected from nature, right? So we might have some second dimensional frequencies that are a little bit either fear-based, we're stuck because there might be trauma, or there's uh, a disassociation like with our physical body, so that could be more of a third dimension. Um, or actually second dimension because that's the elemental frequency of the physical body. If you find you can't create in the third dimension, that would be a, a, a rip or an imbalance or dis, dissonance in the third dimension, right? Or you feel stuck in the past, you can't move forward into the future, you keep repeating. I would say, wow, that sounds very third, fourth dimensional because there might be a frequency or a thought pattern or a belief system in the fourth that is not allowing you to shift and change in the third. So those are the kinds of things we heal with tuning forks. Why tuning forks? Tuning forks are um, created at a harmonic frequency that is already in alignment with how things are according to the universe. So its mathematical expression is already harmonized. It's not shifting and changing and falling out of tune. It's already set. So they're tools that are mathematical expressions of harmony that are coherent with the universe, right? That's the goal. We want to be in coherence, meaning uh, dancing in our harmonic frequency tone with everything, the universe, our surroundings, our belief systems, our, our breath, our body, one another. And we can uh, amplify and accelerate the ability to do that with harmonic tools. And I use the harmonic tools of tuning forks as well as, you know, singing bowls. I love my Tibetan singing bowls. I love my crystal singing bowls. So those are my, um, my favorite type of harmonic tools. Some people use their voice, like Joanne Bracken is able to use her voice as a harmonic frequency adjusting tool, right? And some people use their readings, their psychic readings, their clairvoyance, um, their cards, oracle cards. Those are another way to adjust the frequency back into a state of harmony or alignment, right? So think about how you do that. So I really just wanted to, because um, I know I had some wonderful lunar ladies saying, where's part three? <laughs> where's part three of your Starseed series? So this is part three of the Starseed series, um, Healing Timelines. Part two, we met star races. And then part one, we said hello to, to uh, living a life of harmony instead of dissonance. All right. So part four, hi Nancy, welcome, beautiful. Gosh, so much to catch up with you on. <laughs> She's moving at the speed of light over there. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so part four, what are we going to talk about part four? Hmm, I had it written down somewhere. <laughs> It'll come. Part four, I think it's just kind of really saying hello to the whole opportunity to adjust your personal vibration. And what will life look like when you're living free of dissonance? You're living in resonance, right? I like to equate it like a musical instrument. If I'm a piano and I'm out of tune, 
and I start, you know, going around playing my my vibration, it's going to sound a little hard to the ears, right? Or going to feel a little rough or, you know, not feel so good. But if my self as a piano in tune and I start, you know, singing my vibration and sharing my happiness and joy, it's going to feel really good. It's going to light people up and uh, people are going to want to get close to that. <laughs> and they're going to want to go, oh, what are you doing? I want to do that too. All right. So I invite you to look at your timelines and where you might be stuck. So if you cannot create what you want in life, like if you're having financial issues, if you're having relationship issues, if you're having a loss of direction or repeating patterns showing up in your life, or feeling stuck in a job, or even any type of fear, because there's a lot of uncertainty in our world currently, and it's uh, and there's a, a big agenda to generate as much fear as possible. <laughs> and we are going to be courageous and brave in the face of fear by looking it straight in the face and going, you know what? I'm facing my fears. I'm facing my shadows. I'm cleaning myself from the inside out and I'm grounded, and I'm tuning in, and I'm conditioning my field to be free of blocks, to be free of old patterns, and to be allow the universe to move through me and with me and one with me so that I feel empowered in this time of transition and change. And that also uh, reminds me to share with you about the Tibetan numerology, right? And that's on sale, discounted, now through the end of October. So if you've been feeling, oh, I want to get a Tibetan numerology reading, I highly recommend that you do because uh, I would love to offer it to you at, at this introductory price because it will go up because um, it will go up to its normal price. But uh, definitely take advantage of that. But what Tibetan numerology does, especially when you have tuning forks, I'm using them both together. So I, I'll give an example of something that just happened uh, yesterday, actually. <laughs> so I have, I did my own Tibetan numerology, adjusted my name so that it was free of blocks. I have my uh, personal mantra. I say it out loud. And I notice when I say it out loud in outside, in nature, it's much more palpable and it's very strong. So I was walking Lear yesterday, you know, normal doggy walk. And uh, we're going down a street that has a lot of trees. So I'm like, okay. It's time to, I haven't said the mantra today. It's ready to, i got to say it. Because you want to say it every day as much as possible. And have fun with it. Feel it. Make it your own. Uh, shift and change it. Um, you know, keeping that the frequency is, is the same that we worked out together in your session. So I'm saying my mantra out loud. And, you know, nobody's around. So I don't think anybody's going to look at me and go, why is that lady talking to herself? <laughs> but I'm saying my mantra. I am... Shannon Lemaire with a powerful personal force. When I am powerful, I am loving, I am mystical, I am creative, I am dependable, I am loyal, I am innovative, and organized. Boom. This takes me through times when I am whining, lazy, dull, careless, impatient, and procrastinating. With this powerful personal force, I attract practical, durable ideas, generous and creative people, and trustworthy economical opportunities, right? So I'm saying this outside, and I'm like, yes, 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 right? Say it at least three times. So what I'm doing is I'm conditioning the field, right? I'm conditioning the field around me, my field, my space. So what happens yesterday? Boom, 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 boom. Three readings. Three clients said, hi, June. I, I just, I want to get a reading. I just bought a reading. Oh my gosh, so nice to meet you. Like, what? <laughs> because that's part of my intention. I'm healing my third dimensional co-creative, fourth, you know, third, fourth dimensional timeline of being able to create uh, and, you know, the life that I want to live in this physical world, in this physical body. So I share that with you as an example of what is possible. And if you are running into things that you're like, you know, why does this keep happening? Well, let's find out. Let's look at your numerology through the Tibetan lens, which I'm finding very powerful. 
it sinks with me, and I have a big tonka on the wall that I got when I visited Nepal in 2009. Yeah, that was an awesome trip. 33 days in Nepal. It was great. But I went to the college where they teach uh, this ancient art of, of painting tankas, which are this, their spiritual um, art. And so I bought um, a tanka that was handmade by a, a college art student. So it hangs on the wall. So, you know, I'm saying the mantra over that way, too. <laughs> Whatever you can get, right? Hi, Ken. Welcome. Isn't that awesome? Totally. Right? Cedar Green. <laughs> I got to follow up with you. See how that's playing out in your field. So I want everybody to have their mantra. I want you to be saying it. I want to celebrate with you when things start to change in your life. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh my God, that is so cool. Right? And so we want to be living our lives like saying that for ourselves and each other. Like, oh my God, that is so cool. Right? And then the world becomes, oh my God, that is so cool. <laughs> and what was it in the Tibet numerology live? What came out was, oh, that's so super 11. Because in Tibet numerology, 11 is the great cosmos, right? The Tao, the, the mastery of new beginnings, eternal new beginnings, super 11. So I want all of you to have super 11 lives <laughs> right here, right now, in the third dimension, aligned with 1D, 2D, 4D, 5D, 6D, 7D, and then we're going to hold hands and fly into the 8th, 9th, and boom, all the way out. <laughs> Woohoo, Laura! Yeah, welcome, beautiful! You're ordering today a reading. Yes, yes. Oh my God, we'll have so much fun doing your, your reading, your Tibet numerology. Whoa! Because, y'all... Laura Euler is very powerful. I've seen her chart. <laughs> so if, if there are any blocks in your personal force field, we're going to remove them so that you can engage all your power right here, right now. <laughs> and then we'll, she'd be like, watch me work. Hold my beer. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yes. So I will um, put in, let's see. I hope I have the link right here. Look at that. Uh, you know, when you have all your tabs open. <laughs> so here's a Tibet numerology link if that one's calling to you. And then here is uh, the Tuning Forks for Star Seeds. It's a great course. I had so much fun putting it together. And um, I'm just dying to hear what you guys will experience. So I have seven sets of Tuning Forks ready to go. To, in the mail. <laughs> and here's the, the tuning works for Star Seed. It's discounted now through the end of October. So take advantage. Here's the um, thanks October is the coupon. Coupon. Whoops. Coupon code for $111 discount on the course. Yay! You're welcome, Laura. You're welcome. Thank you. I can't wait. So when you buy the Tibet numerology reading, uh, I send you a couple questions and then uh, my calendar. So then you go to my calendar and you find um, the date that works for you and you say, yay, I'm taking that date. I'm like, awesome. So then I get notice that you signed up <laughs> and I send you a Zoom link and then we meet and we have a blast. I have it on my feel-good list to find tuning forks. Oh my gosh. Well, I have them already here. I have seven sets <laughs> ready to go. So when you sign up for the course, um, uh, you can, you don't have to worry about finding the forks. Because in the course I say, well, you can go here and here's some links. But I decided to buy some now. So I have seven sets. And then when those go, I will order, make another order. But, um, yeah, take advantage of the discount through uh, the end of October because I want to use this via Combusta Power. So, um, I don't know, Ken, 
and or cedar <laughs> and uh, nancy i don't know if you heard and laura now through november 8th um is a time of uh, astrological time called the via combusta and uh ken will talk about this in the astro lab uh today happy hour but the via combusta is a time when the sun moves from 15 degrees Libra to 15 degrees Scorpio, and it's a powerful uh, purge and burning of, um, of energy. It's the most powerful time of the year to uh, move through stuff. Via combusta, fire, phoenix rising. <laughs> so it happens every year from 15 degrees Libra to 15 degrees Scorpio. So I'm going to share more um, in the Astro Lab for the lab partners there, uh, what it is. We'll take a deeper look at it and dive, find it in our charts, who we can engage with. Because Mercury will move through those degrees when he goes direct. So we've got the sun there burning through, and then Mercury is going to like, okay, kind of sweep up the ashes. <laughs> right? And then you can like recreate yourself as you burn free the old dross, right? It's alchemy at its finest. It's definitely the most alchemical part of the year, the via combusta. So I would love for you all to uh, take advantage of that time, move through what you need to, especially as we head into 2022, which is going to be a very powerful year of love. So we want to, like Remy says, it's not our... our um, we're not here to seek love. We're here to remove barriers against it, right? That block us from receiving love because our spirits, our souls, our soul receptors, our, our love receptors, like love is our middle name. <laughs> we get it. We love love. But uh, in this kind of discordant timeline that we find ourselves in, in that third, fourth uh, rift, we want to remove the blocks to receiving love. Because we're natural receivers, we're antennas, we're sponges for love. But in this kind of discordant timeline that we're in, that we as starseeds came to help uh, heal, um, where Rumi says, remove the blocks to it. That's all you got to do. You don't have to go find it. You don't have to be lovable. You already are. We're just removing blocks. And the via combusta, right, Shaman KK, can zzz. Free us real quick, as long as we know when it's happening. <laughs> and then we can tap in with a, with a renewed sense of awareness and utilize it in our lives. And one of the powers of the tuning forks is they are tools that amplify, meaning make bigger, and accelerate. Hurry it up. <laughs> so I like both of those things, acceleration and amplification. But boom That's... To hold my beer energy, right? Okay, does anybody have any questions? Um, I will definitely post this as a YouTube link so you can share it with, a, with your friends and family or your community. And uh, I'll go back and watch for new comments on this. Oh, Nancy, what are the dates again? Great question. My super Gemini soul sister, always on it. <laughs> All right, so it happens when the sun moves into 15 degrees Libra. So it has already begun, just so you know. Today is the 21st degree of Libra. So when we say, it, what day is it? I say, oh, it's 21 degrees Libra, sun. Then you're like, oh. <laughs> okay, so it started on October 9th. It, so we're one week in. And it goes until... November 8th. So October 9th to November 8th. October 9th to November 8th. And that day shifts and change because this current Gregorian calendar is not in alignment with the cosmos. <laughs> so there'll be slightly different dates next year. But that's what's really nice when you have an ephemeris. And you can find out what the dates are for next year. But I want, we're going to stay here now. <laughs> going to utilize what's available to us now. And uh, what is that song? Uh, Burn this mother down. 
sub sign. Sounds like a powerful full moon. Another astute observation, Nancy Cooper, because guess what, what sign the full moon is in? That's right. What is Aries? <laughs> I should definitely have, I should host a Jeopardy uh, astrology game show. <laughs> what is Aries? That's right. All about releasing. So Aries energy is fire. We're in the via combusta. Fire, purging, uh, releasing. Oh, and Nancy, today is the halfway mark of the zodiac year which um, means that the halfway mark of the zodiac year is, is the same energy as a full moon. So today is the energy of a full moon. And do a release today of what you're uh, letting go of. And then don't stop there. Uh, replace the, ener the free space with what you want, what you're enjoying, what you love, what you value, what makes you happy. That's here now. And so what you're communicating to the universe is that you are enjoying what you have right now free of blocks and there's love and joy so don't put in the want energy into what you're feeling because you're just filling in with want which is out here fill it in with like oh i love this about my life i love this and i love this about myself and i love this and so what you're telling the universe is that you want more of that something that you already have right so we let go of the past and the things that have bring us patterns of suffering. And then we fill it in with what we already feel so great about. Right? And if you're having trouble feeling great about anything in your life, it's okay. I want you just to pretend that thing that you want so badly is already in your life happening and you're giving thanks for that. Right? So there's many ways to uh, help yourself adjust and align. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, I've had so much fun. Part three, right? Part three, we talked about healing timelines. So look at, look at us go today. Today, we're at the halfway mark of the zodiac year. So it's a full moon. Today, I looked at the chart of the moment. There's a yod going to Mercury at 10 degrees retrograde. So he's stationed on the degree that he will go direct on on the 18th. The Yod is coming from uh, Uranus today. Like, boom, changes. Let's change. And uh, the goddess herself, Pallas Athena, is uh, telling Mercury to ground. <laughs> And when you take the Tuning Forks for Starseeds course, that is the very first methodology of healing is grounding. And I teach you how to ground with the Tuning Forks, which are going to amplify and accelerate, especially if you have a hard time grounding. And a lot of us air sign people do. It's just That's just the nature that we're dealing with. The cards that we were dealt, that we ourselves dealt for ourselves. <laughs> Our soul was like, oh, yeah, you could definitely deal with that. And we're like, really? <laughs> Don't remember saying yes to that. Ah, <gasps> oh, yes. So we have um, the halfway mark of the zodiac year 2021. It's a full moon vibration. We have a finger of God pointing to Mercury at 10 degrees Libra. We're in, the sun moved in today to the uh, third decan of Libra, which brings in the Gemini twist. And we have Mercury, the ruler of Gemini, stationing uh, at the degree that he will go direct on the 18th of October. And we're in the Via Combusta. And like Nancy pointed out, the full moon that's coming soon on the 20th. But today is the 15th, right? Is that right? So in five days, we have a full moon in Aries, which is fire, during the time of the Via Combusta, which is fire. Today is we're purging and releasing, and we're healing timelines. So also something I shared um, was that uh, right now we're in a timeline of a lot of souls from the fall of Atlantis here again to um, heal that the fall of Atlantis vibration by tuning into um, 
to you know heal that within ourselves and release it right so nancy how would the light language and tuning forks complement each other Ooh, because i want to take your light language course that's on my list <laughs> I'm going to see if I can, with my, now that I'm free in my force field, with my Tibetan personal mantra, I'm going to sign up for your light language course. <laughs> that's, that's on my list. Okay, so how would they complement each other? Yes. Oh, I love this question. Okay, so here we go. The tuning forks speak the universal language of the primordial sound of OM, right? Light language is a universal language. So now we've got two frequencies or forms. Well, this is interesting because light, according to the al Alchemy of Nine Dimensions, Barbara Hanclaw's work, light is the dimension above sound. So when you're speaking light language and it filters down into a, a, a slightly slower frequency, it becomes sound. So possibly is sound like language that we can feel as a vibration. So speaking like language and you put the tuning forks on the, the throat chakra in the field on the third eye, you could, I would bet you could amplify the ability to remember the speaking of it and amplify the power of it coming through. I think it would spiral the light language. I would put the forks on not only my throat chakra front and back, I would um, I do a method called activating the crystal palace with the tuning fork so that's going to open up your pineal gland that can open up to more of that ability to access the light language more easily. I feel like they complement each other really well when working together. You learn light language you learn how to heal the tuning forks, then you put them together. But I would definitely channel the light language activations with the tuning forks on the crystal palace. <laughs> right? Oh, my word is right. <laughs> Isn't that something? Let's try. Let's experiment. Because I've been wanting to uh, do the light language, and I want to do your course. Because I know it's 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 the real deal. Because you know, like you're like, oh, light language. Um, Kelly Kessler, Shaman KK, she was the first one to validate light language for me. Because she like followed her calling and opened up that space within her own life. And then she, and I share with me her experience, and I'm like, oh my god, are you kidding me? That's what it is. I've been doing that since I was a little girl. <laughs> I would get in so much trouble. I'd be looking in the mirror. Right, um, I don't know, maybe five or six years old. I'd be looking in the mirror like this, and I'd be like, bah, 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 talking to myself in the mirror in this language that uh, I thought I was just, you know, as a little girl, I was very serious about it, but I used to get in so much trouble. I'm like, what are you doing? Right? They thought I was cuckoo. But I was talking to myself in the mirror, but I was probably communicating to myself. Stop. So, <laughs> brothers and sisters, I'm not help. We will be floating. Oh my God, right? And I love Nancy Cooper's light language activations that she sends you when you buy like her crystal boards and get healings. And every time that you've shared in Lunar Ladies, your light language beautiful songs, they're always so beautiful. And your voice is very beautiful. Okay, the light language is how I move at quantum speeds because it's a quantum modality. Say what, sister? That's so awesome. I mean, that's just like, I gotta sit with that statement. Like, oh, I gotta read that. Like, <laughs> Yeah, let's move at quantum speed. Right? And quantum, the quantum space is like the eternal space within everything, right? I talk about that in the course about kids channeling it. Oh, wow. I was one of those kids. I swear I had the, and then, you know, I didn't know what it was until Kelly Kessler said, oh, this is what it sounds like. And I'm like, that's what it sounds like. Oh my God. That's what I would do. 
so much. And I would hide it, too, because I didn't want to get in trouble or shamed. So I'd wait till everybody was, like, you know, gone. And I'd be like, da, 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 in the mirror. <laughs> or I would definitely talk that or, you know, speak that to my cats. Now I want tuning forks. Girl, you need the tuning forks. <laughs> I was just saying, I don't know if you arrived when I was saying it, but I have seven sets that I use for the, the, the course, ready to go. So Nancy, if you want tuning forks, let me show you. <laughs> They're on my website. If you get them today, or the first seven people that order them, here, here's the link for those. Um, if you wanna order them today, I'm going to the post office today. <laughs> so if you're like, I want those tuning forks, and you buy them, before I go to the post office today, I will send them to you today with a tracking number. And the shipping is included. So for that price, for the sets, two tuning forks and an activator, um, I, I send it to you um, with free shipping. And you use those for the course. And you can use those two forks for a lot of stuff that you can you know, start doing um, if you already have a modality, a healing modality, Add those tuning forks in because um, you can do specialized sound healing um, healing sessions with your clients. So that's something if you want to go all the way into the sound healing practitioner course, you will learn if that calls to you like, oh, I want to learn that healing modality, become a um, practitioner. But through the Starseeds course, you, I'm going to show you how you can use those on clients if you already have a modality that you do. And with the course, Tuning Forks for Star Seeds, you get invited to a special Facebook group where I give you lots of more tips and secrets. <laughs> Hi, Carly. She, Carly says, light is the medium in physics. Ooh, now we're bringing the science in. Yes, light is the medium in physics that was first referred to as quantum. Okay, so light was first referred to as quantum, quanta, for package, because light is both a particle, yes, and a wave, depending on how it's observed. Exactly, that's what changes the field. Exactly, and who are we? The observers that can change the quanta from particle to wave and condition it and field in the physical world and, and create form, right? That's right, Nancy, we are so magic. We are so super 11 magic. It's, it's crazy. I mean, do we even have words for it yet? <laughs> I don't know. Because I have a feeling where this is leading us is I, I got a glimpse, you know, that our telepathic abilities are coming back online in mass, human to human, right? Because that's an ability that has been lost over time. And in those Atlantean timelines, Lemurian line timeline, especially in Lemuria, we were more telepathic. And we only used our voices for singing, probably singing light language. But we didn't talk. We communicated mind to mind. And our voices, our vocal cords were for singing like birds. <laughs> Who remembers that? I remember that. <laughs> right? And singing light language. Right? Because it's a blessing. It's a, a way to bless, right? Yes, so I'm very excited um, about all the things that are happening. So if light language, talk to Nancy Cooper. Healing your chakras, talk to Shaman KK Kelly Kessler. Learning sound healing, talk to me. <laughs> Tuning forks, <laughs> Tibetan numerology, talk to me. Let's remove those blocks out of your personal force field. Right? Get your mantra going so that you can speak your mantra in light language with tuning forks. What? Now I gotta do that. I gotta translate my mantra into light language and speak it with forks. Another cool thing you could do, Nancy, is because our uh, throat chakra is fingertip to fingertip the width, so you can hold your tuning forks out in your field as you're doing light language, speaking it as well as the hand mudras with sound. Weaving together. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? All right. I've been getting that info too. Yes. Yes. I love synchronicities. That's another thing that happens 
when you step into the quanta, right, Carly? Particle and wave, and you get synchronicities. And to, from my perspective over here, sound healing and um, alignment really quicken synchronicities. <laughs> we don't even know what we're capable of yet. Because remember, Jesus said, you guys can move mountains, right? You're going to take what I did and go, zoom! <laughs> Carly says, fascinating. I have dreams where I'm walking around singing to help heal people. What? Carly, you've been holding out on us. <laughs> this, she's our musical genius in the community. One of many, I'm sure. But Carly has the musical gifts in her fingers <laughs> and her voice. I love it. I have dreams where I'm walking around singing to help heal people. I bet you did that in Lemuria or, and as well as some other beautiful constellation. Probably in Lyra. Hmm. Where are the Pleiades? Where were you, Carly, when you were doing that? I love your dreams. Yes, you're the dreamer. Sun in the 12th house. Some of you, Carly, Kelly, Sun in the 12th. Dreamers. Yes, absolutely, says Nancy. I know the sound healing is so powerful, so if I can use it to amplify my LL, I am all over it. Yes, you're going to amplify your light language with them tuning forks. And I would be honored to help you learn how to use them. So one of my, I like to make funny, you know, sayings and stuff. So I always think of my tuning forks like, you know, a holster in the Old West, like, boom, boom, boom. I got tuning forks and I know how to use them, right? So that's my Old West, um, uh, you know, because we would, because <laughs> uh, I have like a whole surgical set of, of a lot of tuning forks in my training. And, you know, we would keep, we'd want a belt because we'd be moving around the massage table doing sound healings. And I would like to, sometimes I'd need certain ones close by so I wouldn't have to, like, always reach and get one. But I'd have it close and I'd be, zoom, 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 zoom. And I'd be like, I've got tuning forks and I know how to use them. Bang, bang. <laughs> They're powerful. So when you take my course, I share with you my personal stories of my, uh, my my learning of how powerful these tuning forks are. Uh, my sound healing uh, practitioners have uh, been listening. I've heard my stories. <laughs> and they don't end there. There's still more. But yes, I am a big fan of tuning forks. <laughs> know how to use them. <laughs> so I'm going to help you know how to use them too. And then when you get comfortable and confident using your tuning forks, they're going to, they start talking to you. Just fair warning. <laughs> they start talking to you because it's a consciousness that you're tapping into that uh, exists at that quanta, quantum level. And with Nancy teaching her light language course, it's a quantum modality. So she's just going to amplify it with adding a tool with it and she'll tell us what happens. <laughs> and I'm it promises to be amazing. And I'm sure it's going to be Super 11. <laughs> and if you don't know what Super 11 is, Super 11 uh, was one of my Freudian slips. <laughs> 11 in Tibet numerology is synonymous with the universal Tao of creation. And I, you know, I like to say, oh my God, that's so awesome. And so I was reading something and I was sharing and talking. I'm like, oh my God, it's so super 11. <laughs> so super 11 is the new super awesome. And it aligns you with the power of the Tao. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions? Uh, thank you so much for being here, making my Friday a Friday and a Freya day. Thank you. Uh, so watch the replay. There's so much to tap into today as well as you know, take it with you through the weekend. And remember, it's all about our beauty rest. This is the Libra lunar cycle of at noon, a person takes a siesta as a saving symbol. So that's the vibration of beauty rest. So allow yourself to feel what you feel. Pay attention. And if your body wants more resting, say yes. 
with a big smile. And, and rest can come in many forms. It could be speaking light language as a form of rest. It could be laying down. It could be like, I need to go into the dream world like Carly and, and receive messages. That's wonderful. Or I need to do some art and be creative like Francine helps us do, right? Or I need to do oracle card spreads or read a book that just, you know, or learn a new modality that's very resting, right? So some of you are going to learn tuning forks. Some of you are going <clears> to <throat> get a Tibetan numerology reading. It's going to be fabulous. So take advantage of the discounts that are happening now through the end of October. I'm going to be back next week. We'll do part four of the Star Seeds, um, the Tuning Forks for Star Seeds series. So today we talked about timelines. And I'm happy to talk more about timelines. We just scratched the surface. But just know that like at the end of an age, it floods back. Multiple timelines flood back and to see what needs healing. And we look at the age previous before that comes to help the one that's transitioning that opens the door for the next right so we've got lots of wonderful things happening that you can tap into and if you feel a little lost just reach out say hey anybody throw me a line i'm not quite sure what this means and then myself or one of the other amazing community members will say i have just the solution for you <laughs> and that's always fun to see the community engagement and connections i love that too so uh, have a wonderful Friday and weekend. Let me know if you have questions, and hopefully I'll see you in a session soon. As a returning client, you can get a soul refresh session. Um, and if you're a returning client and you want a, a soul refresh astrology session, let me know. I'll send you the link. Um, but here, let me just put it in there now. So this is for returning clients only, right? Because if I haven't seen your chart yet, then I got extra work to do. So this is my discounted reading for um, returning clients, right? There you go. All right. Thank you so much for joining. It's been a wonderful time to be with you. A blast from the past. So get to the future by being here now, healing our timelines. And uh, like Nancy was saying, it's a powerful time for releasing. Now through November 8th, which is utilizing the Via Combusta vibration. So let's do it. If you need help, not quite sure what all that means, just reach out, say hello, and go, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> then I'll say, okay, where should we start? <laughs> and we'll have a lot of fun doing that. All right, have a beautiful day. Uh, looking forward to getting your questions, your comments, and you take good care of yourself. We've got a full moon coming November 20th in Aries. We have Jupiter going direct on October 17th. Mercury going direct on October 18th. So just be in awareness of that. There's wobble periods. So just be grounded to the core of Mother Earth. Until then, bye for now.